hello and welcome to video five. My name's John and today we're going to be talking about parallel computing. And yes, I'm afraid to say he's back again. It's our good friend, John von Neumann. But actually, I'm going to talk about a different John. For those of you that don't know who I am, if you're not from the college, that's me. A long, long, long time ago when I was happy before I was a teacher. Now I want to take you through a typical day in my life. Now, don't worry, I've not lost my mind. This has something to do with computer science, so just bear with me. So number one, I wake up in the morning and two, I get a shower. Then I get dressed, I make breakfast, brush my teeth, drive to work, I change lives all day up until about lunchtime when I have workshops and meetings, uh, sometimes lunch, and then I'll change more lives in the afternoon in period five and six, and then I will drive home. Now I'm going to class that as what I call single core, John. So being single core, everything happens sequentially in an order, one after another. Now wouldn't it be fantastic if I could do two tasks at the same time? So let's call this dual core John. And what I'm doing here is I'm splitting up my 10 tasks from before into two columns. Now this to me in my busy life has a multitude of benefits. I can technically do my tasks in half the time. And this is exactly the same for your computer. By having a dual core processor, you could technically do twice the amount of tasks in the same time it takes a single core processor to execute one. So let's go back to what we originally started with. The von Neumann architecture uses a single processor. We know that and that's what we've studied so far. But back when the von Neumann architecture was just a simple idea and the first single core processors were introduced into the market, how did we make processors better? Well, we tried to put more transistors on the same chip. But it turns out we could only go so far as the heat generated by processors soon became too substantial. So this was when the idea of multi-core systems came into play. So stemming on from the idea before where we had two cores and we call that dual core, looking at the diagram here we've got four cores and we call this quad core. Each core inside the quad core unit does exactly the same as a single processing unit. It just turns out there is four times the amount now. And what this means is four times the speed, or so we think. He said to me, well, John, let's speed our system up by having a thousand cores or a million cores. When I would say to you, well, that doesn't necessarily mean that our system will speed up. Now, there's only so far that we can go. There will be a limit as to how far our program can be broken down into subtasks or threads. So let's have a look at a quick summary on parallel computing before we break it down a little bit further. When we say we're doing parallel computing or parallel processing, it means two or more processors are working together to perform a single task. It's split up into smaller tasks or subtasks. And this is referred to in computer science as threads. Each task is executed simultaneously by all of the available processors. What benefit does this have? Well, it hugely decreases the time taken to execute a program. But in order for this to happen, special software has to be written to take advantage of the multi-core system. So I'd just like to reiterate a point that we made before. All the processors in multi-core systems act the same way as a standard single core processor. If the tasks are split, then all the processors that are sharing the tasks need to be able to communicate to each other. And other processors are aware of the changes that are being made to other parts of the program and they incorporate the changes into their calculations. If this didn't happen, we'd get miscalculations and errors in our program. Most of the complexity comes from putting all of the results from each different processor together to form the complete solution. So now I want to give you a little exam tip. You need to know 
all of the advantages and disadvantages of the parallel computer. Now we do use them a lot and every, most of our modern day systems have parallel computing involved in it at some point. What are the actual advantages of using parallel computers? Well, we know more instructions are processed in a shorter amount of time and that saves us time. Tasks can be shared to reduce the load on individual processors and this avoids bottlenecks. For our disadvantages, it's difficult to write programs for multi-core systems. Results from processing needs to be combined and that takes up some valuable time. So not all of our tasks can be split across multiple processors. And we have concurrency introduces a new class of software bugs. And it does this because concurrency in computer science is all about completing tasks out of order. And just think, when you program a piece of software, it's very, very difficult to test for this. Just think when you build a piece of software, it's very, very difficult to test for your program being executed in different orders. So now what we're going to talk about is runtime calculations. And this will seem difficult, but it's actually quite easy to do. And it's required for the exam. And we must show the impact of parallelization in terms of runtime. Now this may sound quite scary, but don't forget, parallelization is just talking about how a problem can be divided into smaller tasks and all be executed at the same time. So basically, we're just trying to estimate the amount of time it takes to break down a program into smaller subtasks and run. Now again, it's important to remember that some programs may contain portions of code that cannot be parallelized. And we call these serial parts of the program that must be ran in the correct order. Now you've got this man to thank for this little equation here. And this is Gene Amdahl. And I've just noticed I've spelt his name wrong. But don't be scared of this equation. So T of N is basically working out the time it's going to take to execute the program for the number of threads given. So if I had a single core system, I'd put 1 where N would be. If I had a dual core system, I would put 2. Or if I had a quad core system, I would put 4. So remember, it's the number of cores that we've got. So B stands for the fraction of the algorithm that is sequential. So you'll get told in the exam question, the part of the program that cannot be parallelized. And that's what that number is. So for example, if 50% of your program can be parallelized, then 50% is serial, which means it cannot be broken down into smaller tasks. So the number that would go there is 0.5. So 1 over n, where n is the number of threads. In a single core system, the number of threads will be 1, because we can break our program into just 1. A dual core system would have 2 threads, because we can split our tasks into 2 for our two processes. And quad core would be 4, because we can split it up into 4 individual tasks or threads. So by now, I'm aware that I've more than likely lost you. So I'm going to take you through an example to explain Amdahl's law. So in this example, we're using a single core machine. And our runtime is five hours. So in the whole of our program, 80% of that, which is four hours of our five, can be parallelized. Remember, all that means is split up and shared out between all our processors. Now the minimum runtime cannot be less than the time taken to execute the non-parallelized 20%. So 80% we can split up and share between our processors, but there is 20% or one hour of our program that we cannot split up and share. So how did we work that out? Well, first I'm gonna put this into my Amdahl's Law notation. So T 
inside the brackets is a one because I've got a single core machine. I know it takes five hours to execute my program and I multiplied that by my non-parallelized part of my program which is 0 0.2. Then I've added that to one over one thread because again I've got a single core machine. Then I've done 1 minus 0 0.2 for the serial part of my program and that gives me total of five hours to execute the whole of my program including the parallel and the serial parts. Okay so now we've worked out the length of time it'll take to run this program we now need to look at our multi-core systems. So we're going to look at a quad-core example. So here again I've put the equation in the top left of the screen and we're going to do exactly the same again using the same example but this time change the number of threads to 4. So t is the time taken and in brackets I've put 4 for the number of threads and that equals 5 hours which I calculated before from my question. Multiplied that by 0.2 because again that is the serial part of my program plus 1 over 4 for the number of threads then in another set of brackets 1 minus b which again is my 0.2 and that gives me a total number of hours to execute the program using a quad core system as 2 hours. Now even with an infinite amount of threads, the runtime cannot be less than one hour, which is 0 0.2 in this example. And this is because of the serial part of the program. We can't split that down any further. Just one quick point to note, and the final thing that I'll say today, this should be provided in your exam. And that is everything we need to cover on parallel computing and hopefully I'll see you again in the next video.